Here is how fat loss starts. You have to ask yourself the question, if I just do nothing at all, can I still utilize fat? Yes, you actually can. It's kind of interesting and we're gonna discuss how it all works, but what I wanna cover in this video is how fat loss starts, whether you are exercising or whether you're just sitting on the couch literally doing nothing. If you put yourself in the right spot, fat loss can occur. So after this video, I do want you to check out our video sponsor, which is from Sun Warrior. That link down below is for their active line. That is also a 20% off discount link for whatever you wanna get from Sun Warrior. But their plant-based protein is different from other plant-based proteins. It's utilizing pumpkin seed protein and also utilizes other protein combinations to make sure you're getting a complete amino acid profile, but they have digestive enzymes, they have probiotics in them, and they have fatty acids in them. So you're getting a nice spectrum of nutrition so it's almost like a whole food. So don't get me wrong, I'm not a plant-based guy. I will literally have a Sun Warrior shake alongside my steak and eggs. For me, it's about getting a well-rounded amino acid profile and also getting different nutrition and some fiber in the mix too. So that link down below saves you 20% off, again, using that specific link, it's in the top line of the description underneath this video. Their tastes are unbelievable. Their cake batter flavor, brand new cake batter flavor, out of this world. So let's set the scene for a second. Okay, you've got this big giant sphere. It's called an adipocyte. It's a fat cell. And we may think to the naked eye or just our basic understanding that when we burn fat, we take that fat cell and we burn it. But that fat cell is actually just a house, a house of lots of little molecules, okay? Triglycerides. So triglycerides live inside this sphere called the adipocyte. And that's what's kind of interesting is we don't burn the adipocyte. We don't burn the fat cell. We burn the triglycerides inside of the fat cell. So that's why a fat cell never really goes away. It just shrinks or fills up with more triglycerides. So these triglycerides are three fatty acids, three individual pieces of fat that we use as fuel that are tied to what is called a glycerol head. Okay, so think of it as like a three-legged monster. Got a glycerol head, okay, and then it's got three fat acid legs, right? You gotta cut them off individually to use them. It's kind of weird. You have to like slay the monster. The problem is, like I said, you can't just take that triglyceride out of the fat cell and burn it. You have to go through a series of processes and unlock the ability to cleave off the fatty acids from the glycerol head, and then you can burn it. Well, that's what we're going to discuss. Let's break it down. So the whole process starts with an alarm. Okay, you've either not eaten, so your body's like, oh shoot, we're running out of fuel, or you're exercising intensely where your energy demand is exceeding the fuel that's available, and your body says, uh-oh, uh okay, we gotta sound the alarm, there's an issue going here, we don't have enough glucose, we don't have enough fuel. Okay, so your body increases the activity of what's called the sympathetic nervous system. Increases, it tells your nervous system to say, okay, put this guy in a little bit of stress mode or a lot of bit of stress mode, depending on the severity, right? Because that stress response is critical for the fat burning. Okay, what happens is that stress response signals the adrenal glands to produce, well, adrenaline, cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, all these things that are called catecholamines. Well, since the alarm is sounding, we need fuel, these catecholamines do a couple of things. They liberate some carbohydrates from storage form, but they also do this. They head over to the fat cell, that big sphere, the adipocyte, and they start pounding on the door. They say, hey man, hey, 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 and they're pounding on the door and they're saying, hey, hey, we need triglycerides, we need fat, we need it now, this guy's starving. So they're pounding on the door and the triglycerides are just hanging out in the fat cells and they're just like asleep. Right? And they're like, finally, protein kinase A comes to the door. And he opens the door, the fat cell, and he's like, what, man, I was asleep. Like, what the heck do you want? And protein kinase A is like, oh man, did you hear the news? Did you hear the news? We need fuel, we need fuel. So he, the protein kinase A is like, okay, okay, I'm on it, I'm on it. And he goes over and he's like, shoot, I need help. Okay, so he recruits the help from additional proteins. In this case, it's alpha beta hydrolase domain containing protein. Now, what the heck does this guy do? Well, this guy becomes like the new general. Okay, he's like, okay, thanks protein kinase A, you were a great messenger, but now we have the serious issue at hand. Now, this is all happening at warp speed. I'm slowing it down and making it kind of funny, right? But okay, so now this new protein says, all right, We've got all these triglycerides. Who's ready to go? Some triglycerides raise their hand and they say, okay, we need fatty acids cleaved off. So the first one that comes into play is one called adipose triglyceride lipase. It is the first pair of scissors or an enzyme that cuts off the first leg of the three-legged monster. One fatty acid is now liberated. Okay, great. Well, then now what? 
Well, now another set of scissors comes in. A different enzyme called hormone-sensitive lipase cuts off the second leg of the three-legged monster. And finally, one called monoglycerol lipase comes along and says, aha, cuts the final leg off of the monster. So now you've got a beheaded fat monster. You got three fatty acids and a glycerol head. Okay, well, what are you gonna do with that? Well, this is where the fun kind of starts. Well, the glycerol molecule says, ha ha, I'm water soluble. I'm gonna jump right into the bloodstream and float away. See you later, suckers. I've been tied to you for so long and finally I'm liberated. So because it's water soluble, it goes into the bloodstream, it goes and does its thing. Multiple different things, generally goes to the liver and creates glucose via something called gluconeogenesis. Okay, but you still have the three, fats, uh, three fatty acids. They're like, okay, well, how do we get out of here? Well, a bus comes along, something called albumin. Okay, and it hops on this bus, okay, and this albumin takes it wherever it needs to go. You now have fatty acids that have been liberated. This has summarized lipolysis, the first stage of losing fat. But just because the fats are liberated doesn't mean you're 100% going to burn them. Okay, so it's like if they were to travel around in the bloodstream and they ultimately didn't have an opportunity to get burned, you bet your bottom dollar that they can redeposit and get right back in to a fat cell again. But generally, if they're released, they're released because they're needed, and that doesn't necessarily always happen, right? If, they're, if the catecholamines and the guys are knocking on the spear, knocking on the adipocyte, they usually know how much to command. If there's more people pounding on the spear, more triglycerides are gonna be you know, cleaved off and released. But this is where, if you are in this state of being, let's see, say, hungry, this is why working out is a phenomenal thing to do at that point in time, i.e. working out in a fasted state like I usually recommend, right? Because you've liberated fats. They're already mobilized. They're already in their usable form riding on the albumin bus. Now is your chance to move and have them actually go into the cell, go into the mitochondria and create energy and get burned, beta oxidation. So we have an opportunity there. So yes, you can absolutely burn fat just doing nothing, sitting at rest, doing nothing. But are you gonna burn more when you move? I think that's kind of a no-brainer. But it's not a bad idea to get yourself into that state where your body liberates fat and then put the ante up on moving that body and getting stuff burned because that's how you start to burn fat. I'll see you tomorrow.